back over. Again, we already brushed it off. Give it another look. Uh, make sure there's no excessive oil or grease in the holes. Uh, that inhibits the Loctite from working correctly. These are very dry. Uh, if you do have to clean them out, clean them out, blow them out really well. Uh, we like to use acetone. Uh, acetone is a fairly cheap cleaner. Um, whenever we install a gear, we use this cylinder to hold everything up. Uh, this is the carrier that we're we'll using. True track from Eaton. Just like any other assembly, you want to come in and inspect the mating surfaces for any damage, dirt, debris. Uh, I looked at this one earlier, uh, everything looks really good on it. Give it another once over. There should always be a slight press fit between a carrier and a gear. Uh, if there's not, uh, inspect it for damage if the um, if it's a used part if the guy before you um, took a grinder sander or whatever and uh, modified the parts uh, that's probably not a part that you want to use what I like to do <coughs> is try to start the bolt slightly we have a couple longer bolts that we use to line it uh, there can be an issue if you try to just press the thing on without having any kind of alignment. Uh, if the holes are not lined up, you'll wind up cross-threading the, the bolts into the gear, uh, which usually damages both the bolt and the gear. The gear is hardened. It's hard to clean up a hard to clean up a uh, thread that's been hardened. move over to the press and press it the rest of the way on and then we'll install the bolts. All right, what I like to use, it's a seven ton arbor press. Um, we use it exclusively in our assemblies. You have a little more feel for if parts are going in correctly, uh, straight. Uh, if there is an issue, you can stop before damage happens. A lot of times on a hydraulic press, uh, you'll see people that will use a, you know, a 50 ton hydraulic press to press a bearing on. A 50 ton press will press any bearing on anything if the shaft's small enough. So we like to have a little more of a human feel uh, to the assembly. Then press the carrier in, seat it down, and then we'll install the bolts. All right. These are the original bolts that came out of this assembly. This was a new assembly, uh, nothing had been run. Um, the other carrier. Um, was put together with these 5 8 head bolts. This is fine. This is a this is a, uh, a grade 8 um, fine thread bolt. There's nothing wrong with it. I do have a personal preference though. I do like to use the uh, the OE style oversized head uh, bolt for the same application. There is a little bit bigger footprint for, for clamping force. Uh, whenever you have a, uh, a track lock and a forward application, you do actually have to use this 5 8 head. Uh, because of the counter bore uh, on, on the lockers and on the true tracks, uh, you can use the OE style three quarter inch head. There's a lot more clamping force. Uh, it's just a better bolt for this application. Not that there's anything wrong with this, it's not going to set you up for failure, but this is a better option if you have that option. So I'm going to take these and recycle them. And with these new bolts with the larger head, I'm going to apply a little bit of Loctite 271, which is what they call permanent Loctite. It's not meant for removal. You can reactivate it with heat. Um, whenever you apply Loctite, apply Loctite on the end of the bolt, about the first two or three threads. Uh, whenever you assemble it, uh, it runs itself all the way through the mating thread. Uh, if you put it towards the top or in the middle, you may have half the bolt that doesn't have any Loctite on it. So that's just a little simple tip. Whenever you're doing assemblies, especially on anything that has a hardened thread, like in a gear, always, always hand start all your fasteners. 
this carrier has a little bit of a counterbore that I'm going to have to contend with. And what I'll do is uh, I'll actually use a thin wall, a chrome socket. Uh, it's not an impact socket, um, but I'm not actually going to be beating on it. Um, we're just going to seat the bolts and then we'll torque them to spec. So uh, normally you'd want to use an impact socket during any kind of assembly, disassembly. But in this case, we're going to have to make an exception. And use a thin walled three quarter so that you can get past the counter bore. Whenever I do my assembly uh, with this impact wrench, it's a fairly decent impact wrench, um, and, and you might want to pay attention to this whenever you're working on stuff. Um, I use a lowest setting on everything, uh, and I I assemble the, the fasteners until they they touch, and then everything gets torqued by hand. Uh, you should never come in and. Uh, use this as your means of torque. Torque wrenches are cheap. Uh, even the beam styles are fairly cheap. They're not near as accurate. Uh, everyone has an opinion. Uh, we do calibrate our torque wrenches and we use a ratchet style micrometer style torque wrench. Just like anything else, whenever you have more than one bolt, you want to use a crisscross pattern. Uh, we did press this down on there. Um, it just ensures that the parts are going together uh, flat. We're going to go ahead and torque these to spec now. I go to my vise again. Depending on the carrier, sometimes you have to be a little creative of how you hold it while you torque these. Um, ring gear bolts we torque to 80 foot pounds. crisscross pattern. Once I have them, I go around in a circle, just double check that I have all of them. And then we're ready to assemble the bearings. The bearings, just like everything else, they were new but had been assembled. We're going to look at them really quick, just a uh, quick inspection. I looked at these previously, they look pretty good. Uh, they are full of oil, uh, full of grease, which is always a good sign. Uh, and they are a Timken bearing. Uh, I always recommend a quality bearing. Um, everyone has their brands that they care for. Um, Timken and Koyo are both really good brands. All right, we're gonna press the bearings onto the carrier. Um, I usually apply a thin, thin wipe of general purpose grease. Um, it's cheap. It's everywhere. It's all over the shop. Um, it gives us a little bit of lubrication uh, on the parts. Uh, very thin film. doesn't have to be a lot. Uh, two things you always want to do is whenever you're pressing anything together there should be some sort of lubrication ever so slight. And whenever you're installing O-rings and seals they should always be lubricated. Uh, most failures happen uh, on startup with bearings, seals, and O-rings. It's generally because they're not lubricated. We have fixed string built. Um, a lot of these bearings actually push past the uh, the boss area of the carrier. Uh, we do have a recessed area, and every bearing size we have we have tooling set up for it. Again, we like to use. We can control it. Feel how uh, how much pressure is going on. Uh, I generally, out of habit, turn it 180. <coughs> Again, you can see how that tool will actually press that bearing. Uh, past this uh, this trunnion area. Um, a lot of failures and a lot of problems happen because when people do this in a shop they'll put something flat on top of it, push it down, it's level and there's a big gap underneath it. Uh, that's all well and good. When you do the assembly uh, there's still a gap and as they put pressure in use uh, uh, whenever it's in the vehicle uh, you will lose your preload because your bearing will actually push onto the carrier which lets it slot back and forth, set yourself up for failure where uh, and eventually you have to spend more money you know to replace the thing. On the second side, I'll show you something else to look for once it's assembled. It's a really simple check uh, to check for what we just talked about. You can use a feeler gauge, you can hold it up and look at the light. 
But you always want to come in and make sure that your bearings are seated completely. Uh, general check for us is we have light colored walls, we'll hold them up, look underneath them. You can use a feeler gauge. Um, it's just a, just a real quick check, just to make sure that it is on there. Um, <clears throat> if you press this on flat, there's going to be probably a 60,000s gap. It's really apparent that there's a gap there.